Hi everyone, I'm Dhrumal, a product manager here at Sentry, and I'm excited to tell you about some of our latest features that make it easier for you to debug your errors and maybe more fun too. We have shipped improvements that make your entire workflow easier as you code, release, and fix bugs in your apps. In a second, you'll see how new capabilities like issue review comments, bad release detection, and better context in Slack and Sentry issues makes the debugging experience better throughout our workflow. Later, my colleague Steven will be talking about how we are making it easier to send the data you need to Sentry so that you can spend more time building cool stuff instead of instrumenting it. We believe the best time to fix bugs is when you're already working on the code. Our new comments and open pull requests will help you do that. Let me show you how. I already have some changes that I want to merge for my backend. Once I open this pull request, Sentry will comment within a few seconds and let me know that I have unhandled issues caused by the function I'm modifying. This makes it easy for me to fix these issues by adding a few more commits. As a result, I have fewer unhandled issues in my code and I did not have to context switch to solve a problem. Improving code quality is often about us making things better along the way and we think these comments help us do that bit by bit. Now, despite our best efforts, we'll still ship bad releases occasionally that need to be halted or rolled back. We think that it shouldn't be painful to detect that your release is doing badly. So we are taking the guesswork out of this process. You can now let Sentry monitor your releases by telling it what thresholds you care about. In this example, for our JavaScript project, we think the release is bad if it has more than 500 errors in a five minute window for a production environment. Once Sentry detects a release, we actively monitor its health. When a release is unhealthy, it's marked in a release list and details page so that team members know they need to investigate further. You can also pull our new API in your CI CD pipeline to detect if the release is bad based on your thresholds and automate your deployment decisions. Additionally, we'll soon ship features that fire notifications in webhooks when Sentry detects bad releases. Once we detect bad releases and stop further deployment, our immediate next step is to triage the problem and fix it. Sentry has already sent us alerts for new issues and those often go to our Slack channels. We've improved our Slack integration to make our alerts more contextual in order to make this first step of debugging easier. Issue alerts in Slack now display additional information like event, user accounts, and suggested assignees. You can add notes to your alerts for more context as well. For example, you might include a link to a troubleshooting rulebook. There are also more options to determine how you'd like to archive the issue. And finally, we've improved assignment so that you can search for any team member to assign the issue to. These improvements have made our triage decisions easier at Sentry, and we often assign, resolve, or archive issues directly from Slack now. But when troubleshooting, we'll still go into Sentry to get the full picture. We need to understand if there's a backend error causing problems in our frontend, or we need to know what actions our user took so that we can reproduce an error. Let me show you how we've recently improved our issue details page. Here, I have a 500 error in my React frontend, and it's not giving me enough information to solve the problem. But we now have an improved trace navigator. The trace navigator lets me visualize where this error was detected in a trace and lets me see what other issues could be connected to this error. In this example, an unhandled inventory error in my backend API is the root cause, and a single click was all it took for me to find a connected problem. As I scroll below, I can also see the replay for this backend error, and I can now view the replay directly from my issue without navigating to another page in Sentry, allowing me to stay within the context of my issue. Here, my backend error is leading to a dead click that I should fix. We are very excited to have you try out these new features to make your workflow easier. Please join us on Discord if you have any questions. And now, I'll hand it over to Steven to talk about how we are making it easier for you to send the data you need to Sentry without spending hours instrumenting your code. Hi, I'm Steven Eubank, and I am the product manager for SDKs at Sentry. Our SDK teams are constantly working to support more platforms, more developers, and allow you to monitor, and importantly, being able to debug your code with less barriers to using Sentry. That being said, we don't want you to have to cover your code with instrumentation and complex API calls just to use our SDKs. We want to help you find problems, fix them, and let you focus on writing your own code. That's why with our latest JavaScript SDK major release, we are extending the number of integrations we provide with our Node SDK from seven to 20. 
These integrations will allow many developers who had to manually instrument their code with up to 85 lines of code or more in the past can now decrease that to about 10. But we didn't want to make improvements only for specific frameworks, we wanted to improve for everyone. So while we were at it, we decided to overhaul and simplify our performance API, meaning we give you more insights and you can write less code. So how exactly can we pull all of this off? OpenTelemetry is an open standard for observability technology. For over a year, we have been looking for more ways to better support OpenTelemetry and provide its benefits to developers working with Sentry. And in the case of Node.js, the breadth and depth of coverage is simply better with the OpenTelemetry SDK than what we had with previous versions of our own Node SDK. So we've replaced the parts of our SDK responsible for collecting performance and data with OpenTelemetry. Adding auto instrumentation support for COA, Hoppy, Fastify, Nest.js, and improved existing support for ORMs like the latest Prisma 4, GraphQL, and the Express framework. So for COA, Fastify, and Nest.js, you can look forward to reducing the footprint of our SDK in your code base. Regardless of the improvements we made for those frameworks, as mentioned before, we also simplified our API for everyone. So we yanked out a lot of the complex concepts for API so that if you do need to write some custom instrumentation, you won't need a PhD in Sentry Lingo. You can just create spans and send the data to Sentry that you need and focus on the problems you actually care about. To take advantage of these improvements, all you need to do is upgrade to the latest release of our SDK and check out our migration guides. We look forward to hearing back from you about our improved support and if there's anything else that you'd like for us to add. Thank you, and we'll see you in Discord and on GitHub. And until next time.